What's up, what's up, what's up, thank you guys for tuning in to Sports Hit Radio. I'm your gracious host, Emmanuel. This show is brought to you by the Space Entertainment Network. You guys, now today, I'm going to talk about the NBA uh, projections. Right now, we're just going to break it into divisions. Uh, there's six divisions in the NBA, so I'm breaking down into each one. We're going to start off in the Atlantic Division in the Eastern Conference. I have the Celtics, number one. Number two, I have the Sixers. Number three, eight, number three, I have the Raptors. Number four, I have the Knicks. And five, I have the Brooklyn Nets. Here's the reason why. The Celtics are basically returning a lot of talent. They went to game seven against uh, Cleveland without Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward. Now think about that. Key word is health. If they're healthy, they're definitely coming out of the East. Um, uh, my concerns with the Celtics is they have a lack of size outside of Horford. Um, he's an all-star caliber center. That's my only concern. But this team has at least two. They have three two-way players. Kyrie Irving, who's the best closer in the game. Um, and they got Marcus Smart coming off the bench and Terry Rozier, uh, who, who, who provides a little bit of grit to the team. I have the Celtics being the number one seed coming out of the East, um, and especially if they're healthy. The second team in, that I like is the Sixers. Sixers are basically an upcoming team. Upcoming team. Ben Simmons, um, he's basically that one of that, that second tier um, NBA star caliber players who can come to his own. Now the key is, uh, can he make that next next jump? Can he improve his jump shot? Because the one of the one of the flaws to this team is they have a lack of shooters. They have JJ Redick, obviously, who's a knockdown shooter on the team. A key player in this team is Dario Saric. He's he's a very uh, very cerebral player. Um, he, he he can score in many ways. He, he shoots a, a good field goal percentage. He can shoot the three, stretch the floor. Uh, he has a face-up game. Um, he, has, he has a little post-up game to him, too. And he, he can pass the ball pretty well. I like the Sixers, but they have a lack of shooting. But uh, Sixers will definitely be a top three C team in the East. This Toronto team, I I like. The The concerns I have with Toronto is is that it's obviously it's Kawhi's health. And they do have a potential to be a top two team. A top two seed in the east and just Kawhi's health is is a, is a question obviously uh Kyle how he's going to mesh with Kyle Lowry and the whole chemistry of the team Dwayne Casey got fired for being coach of the year I can't believe it and that was basically one of the dumbest firings um probably one of the history in the NBA another key part is Jonas Valanciunas I feel like he has to step this his game up in order for this team to go another level they do have Serge Ibaka he's an enforcer playing the four um, and he can stretch the ball, stretch the floor a little bit as well. Play both ends of the floor. Jonas Valanciunas has to step his game up. I feel like he has to average a double, a double double between 15 and 10, 15, 11 points per game. Um, he has to average a double double. His field goal percentage is pretty solid. Um, his mid, he has a solid mid range, but he has to step his game up. Uh, I believe a little bit more in order for Toronto to take that to go to the next level. The, the team <clears throat> that's pretty interesting is the New York Knicks. They did improve. Uh, they have some. They have some talent here. Porzingis tore his ACL last year. That was a bummer. Um, that's the only bright spot they have on offense because he's starting to come to his own. Uh, now they're saying that he's basically going to take it slow and monitor, monitor that. Now, with that being said, is I feel like New York is really planning for the future. And keep in mind, they do have a lot of money freed up for next uh, for for next summer. Uh, so they're, they're definitely going to be in play, possibly, possibly for Kyrie and Jimmy Butler uh, for that pairing to come to New York. Possibly. I'm not making no speculations, but it's possible. Also have a new coach with David Fisdale. I like him a lot as a coach. He got the raw, he got, he got the raw end of the deal in Memphis, Kevin Knox. He's the dark horse pick for rookie of the year, in my personal opinion. He can score the ball. Um, he can, he can shoot it. Um, he, had, he had a good summer league too So he's a rookie that you have to keep your eye out on It's Kevin Knox um, Out of Kentucky Tim Hardaway Jr. I think he's going to have a solid year Another guy that I really like so much And I, I, I've, I've talked to this with my production team uh, Last time I talked to him about it Is Mario Hendroza I feel like a very underrated signing When Evan Fourier went down He came in and started scoring the ball He's a solid shooter He just never had the playing time 
when he was in Orlando. Now he's going to have an opportunity to possibly be the sixth man or the next guy coming off the bench. I think he's going to get some solid minutes, and I think he's going to produce. Frank Nicotina and Trey Burke. Nicotina, uh, I want him to see him take the next step. He was basically one of the best defensive um, guards in the NBA. Uh, not, not well as a rookie, but his all his game offensively has to improve. Trey Burke seemed like he took some strides last year um, with the point guard position, but um, I, I like this next squad. But obviously, they're kind of in a rebuild, so we'll see. In the Brooklyn Nets, I really don't have too much to say about them. <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, but look, one of the bright spots is D'Angelo Russell. Even though he was he was out majority of the season. I think he's gonna have a solid year this year with the Brooklyn Nets. I want to see Rondé, Rondé Hollis Jefferson take the next step. Spencer uh, Dunwiddle, who was in the running for most improved player, very underrated player. Uh, he'll probably be the uh, uh, number. Uh, he won't be number one scoring option, but he's gonna come off the bench probably more than likely. And Allen Crabb, he's probably gonna be like a number one, number two scoring option. And they have Harris come off the bench, who's very underrated for scoring. But Brooklyn is rebuilding they lost their picks to boston so there's, there's no need there's no need for me to talk too much about them <laughs>